So my name is uh, Yann Cardon. I'm, uh, I'm software architect in, uh, in Orange for now around 20 years. And I mainly do uh, internal consulting. I'm operating at group level, uh, internal consulting to, to help the project to, to use cloud native technologies, um, DevOps, etc. And now uh, the objective of this talk is uh, I will tell you about what's happening inside the telco. Uh, the business models uh, are evolving and we do have new challenges to, to deal with. And uh, I want to show you how exciting technologies can uh, help to break those challenges. So, so let's go. We will speak about Edge, obviously, and uh, a little more about uh, opening the ecosystems. Uh, so first, maybe uh, you might know what is Orange. So Orange is a French telco operator. It operates uh, worldwide also, mainly in Europe, uh, in Africa, and, and we have a different type of activity. So what Edge means for a telco operator it can mean different things. So uh, being an international carrier, we we do have uh, we we do uh, we have pipes under the oceans, uh, big pipes. Uh, we do have uh, we do have uh, access points uh, where we we offer some some services such as uh, I don't know CDN or uh, IP transit etc. So this is one kind of activities at the edge. We do have a lot of uh, pro po point of presence uh, across different countries. Um, uh, Orange is also operating is a mobile uh, mobile uh, telephony infrastructure. So that means that uh, we do have a lot of antennas, but uh, and all all the infrastructure to 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 support these uh, telecommunications. A and right now, Orange is is moving uh, to a virtualized uh, infrastructure with a. Uh, virtualized network functions. So, uh, with a, with a, um, really a, a tree structure with a, a regional clouds, with a edge clouds, and then the the far edge, which would be in this case the uh, the antennas, where there, there are some some uh, infra infrastructures also. Orange is also has customers in different countries, so. On this customer, we offer for this customer we offer broadband. So that means there are some equipment right inside the the customer uh, home, and that would be the the user edge. So these equipment that could be set top box, that could be broadband routers, etc. Uh, and we can also consider that uh, whenever we we have software. Uh, inside the inside the, the smartphone or even in, inside our clients when they run something belonging some application orange application inside their browser so all of these are, are edge in fact and as we can see these are very different in nature very different uh, type of equipment in terms of uh, computing power uh, in terms of uh, manageability, so uh, as further as you you go from the central point, the the private clouds or the hyperscalers cloud, manageability becomes a problem. It it costs more to to operate at the cloud, at the edge. Sorry. Um, then we we also have a second trouble with that is that. This is not only a distributed system, it is a geo-distributed system. So we have to take care about latency. Uh, maybe we can have some different behavior depending on the region where we are deploying. So, so I will give you an example uh, coming from uh, our, uh, what we call the core commerce. So this is the information system, the core commerce, what it does, it helps selling the products, selling the services. So to sell them, then also we will want to provision them, uh, to activate them. A and of course, whenever the client, the customer will use those services, we, we want this system to, 
we, we want to, to be able to rate this usage. So this is uh, the example I, I will give you. So uh, this is, well, ju just uh, to explain the, the schematics, but it's quite, quite easy. You've got a user right now when he's using, let's say, uh, a telephony services. Um, then it goes to the core network. It's something black box. And the core network produces a call detail record. And this uh, call detail record gets rated uh, inside the core, core commerce. So this works, um, but it's slow, in fact. And what we, what we, you cannot cope with all the traffic. Uh, and in fact, uh, usually those systems, the, we used to, to do it in batch mode uh, and not, uh, not on the fly. Uh, so, and there is a second problem with that, is that you, you cannot act on, on, the, on the, the service usage. You cannot act. You, you can only, well, take notes of what's happening, but the, you, you, you cannot cut the, the usage of, on the fly if for one, one reason you, I don't know, you, you want to avoid your uh, bill customer Bill shop for your customers because you are in roaming, etc., etc. So, so then we we could. So this is not at the edge, obviously, and and we 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 saw and it's been usable for postpaid, what we call postpaid, and um, there is a first first evolution where we will want to move those rating function directly inside the core networks, so closers closer to the user. So, so here we've got, uh, well, we, we do have the same rating engine somewhere, rating function, but, uh, but here are the, the troubles uh, coming because, uh, so it does exactly the same, same difference is that we are managing a balance and this balance could be a balance of uh, the user is, is buying a certain amount of, of data or, or, or minutes of conversation or price, whatever. And, and we will update those, this balance on the fly. And whenever the balance is at zero, then the customer has to refill it. So, so here we see that we, we can act. We, 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 we have a reactive loop, in fact. So this is why first we are doing edge activities is because we want to close the loop to have a, a short reaction time uh, between uh, the, the input signal, the business logic, and then we want to, to act. So in this case, for instance, to cut the service. So here comes new, new trouble with, with that. Uh, we have to take care uh, about, um, about state distribution, in fact, because uh, we will have to, to sync the customer balance, which is on the edge, with uh, the customer balance uh, on, uh, on the core commerce side, because our customer will want to know how much they, they still have on, on their balance. And maybe they will want to top up uh, th those balance to recharge it. Uh, we'll have more problem because uh, we will have also to replicate some uh, the customer inventory, for instance. And, and, and more, more difficult, we will have to transcode what the tr commercial offer definition to uh, a commercial offer definition at the edge inside the core network because it's not the same software running centrally and not the same software doing the, the rating engine function. So, so there is a, a trouble here. So to, to sum up, I, I would say there, there are different reasons uh, we, we would like to, to go at the edge. First one is uh, because of latency. So I say have a shortest re retroaction loop between sensor, applying logic, and then generate effects. We, we also maybe would like to make use of, a, of a, to customize what's happening at the edge. Maybe it's not exactly the same behavior. We, could, we do have some local context. So maybe the business logic we want to project at the edge is not the same everywhere. So, um, and the last reason would be also for security because uh, whenever you, 
here we are speaking about doing some rating, but if we are in the automotive uh, uh, industry, well, uh, if we can hack, if you can hack something, if you can in inject some bad behaviors, then it, it could be lethal. So, uh, having your business logic as close as possible to the input and the effector, it, it's something that helps with security also. So let's deal with what are the different, let's sum up what would be the different uh, challenge we have to deal with uh, operating at the edge. So three, we, we talk about in uh, coming from our use case, latency, code portability, because we want the same software to run centrally and at the edge also. And, and we will have also to deal with distributed states. Uh, but then we do have other stuff not coming directly from our other our use cases. Uh, we will we want to operate at, at the edge, so we want to deploy, operate. Uh, maybe the the topography, the topology will evolve. Uh, so it would be nice if uh, our solution could adapt to different topologies. Um, we do have to deal with trust, no trust. Um, Tolerance, network tolerance also, to deal with network partition, for instance. We might be inside a use case where we want to operate multi, that, we, that are multi-tenant. And, and, uh, and of course, we, we want to be as efficient as possible, which means less energy, which means better for the planet. So, uh, I will uh, present rapidly, but I, I think if you were the, here at the previous school, you, you know about uh, uh, globally what is WebAssembly. Is, uh, who knows about WebAssembly here? Oh, almost. <laughs> I, I will just retain uh, so, some, of the, some of, the, of the characteristics which are really important, I think, at least for our use case, is uh, running inside a sandbox environment. And second, second is, uh, is coming from WASI and, uh, and the component model is uh, the fact that uh, uh, we can do runtime componentization. We can aggregate components at runtime. Uh, so, uh, and those two characteristics, they are really useful if we want to, to deal with uh, multi-tenancy. Uh, I don't have much time, so I, I'll let you read uh, about uh, containers. <clears throat> uh, then I, I will introduce a second technology, which is Wasm Cloud, which could be seen as a well the um, the orchestrator for an orchestrator for uh, for Wasm payload payloads. Uh, so, who knows about Wasm Cloud? Okay, I'll, I'll spend a little more time on this. Um, what you do with Wasm Cloud is uh, you, you just ins you have different servers. Uh, so in gray here, you just make sure they can connect each other, uh, maybe directly on on internet, uh, and then you just throw um, some ju just instance of a, 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 um, an executable, a binary on those servers, uh, and and those binary. What, what they, they, they are really, uh, what, what's, uh, what's enabling the enabler uh, for, for Wasm Cloud. So inside those binary, you will find the, the WebAssembly runtime, uh, and you will find also some NATS clients that will help you to, uh, to communicate uh, so that the nodes and, and this binary will, will communicate to, together. So, so once you've, you've done that, what you have is uh, you get a, a flat topology uh, and you've got uh, ambient connectivity between all these different nodes. So you have an abstraction which is called a, a lattice. So it's based on NATS. Uh, and on this abstraction, uh, meaning everything that belongs to a lattice, they can communicate freely. You, you can, you can uh, do, do some, some access. You can. Uh, enforce the communication uh, and do some access control, but natively it's open and you can communicate uh, freely between the nodes. So 
Uh, when you think about how difficult it is to have multi-clustering inside Kubernetes, this, this is really helpful. Um, so what you get also is having a single control plane for, for the whole of your lattice. So you can define precisely where you will, you will uh, bunch or, or you will throw your, your, your payloads in fact. And, and um, one neat thing is uh, there is a neat abstraction uh, and I, um, Wasm Cloud is, is really a pure, has really a pure functional approach in the sense of you've got two different abstraction uh, actors in blue here. Uh, actors, they are just functions in fact. They, they cannot do anything by their own. They are just reacting to inputs. And, and you've got some, uh, and you deal with the outside world with the uh, capabilities. So it's the same as, as if you've seen the previous talks, those capabilities that can be random generators, that can be a database, that can be uh, an HTTP endpoint, etc. So. Um, so this is the base. Uh, so for the, the use case I will show you uh, and the implementation uh, I will show you, we'll b use both uh, Wasm for sure and Wasm Cloud to ensure the deployment at the edge on this, all of these, uh, on the different servers. Okay. Um, if we go back to our distributed system, rating system use case, I, I just want to introduce some, some breaking change in the, in the telco industry. It comes from uh, 5G, so it's not just the same technology plus one because it's better. There are really, uh, really breaking change, as I said, uh, and, and 5G is really about collaboration it's between different actors and it's about having composite services. Um, previously, Telco used to have to, to own most of the value chain of, of communication service. So they are using their own service in their own infrastructure, etc. And it's not the case anymore. Um, uh, we've got, we've got um, if I continue to the history side, uh, then the, we, we, we had over IP services and communication over IP services coming. Uh, and, and finally, we could say that uh, uh, telco operators were related to, uh, to the role of connectivity provider and not communication, just connectivity you've got. And now we, we do have ambient connectivity, etc. What 5G brings, and, and this is crucial, is that we, we do have uh, two different aspects. The first one is uh, QoS. You can choose the quality of your communication on your connectivity. So that means uh, if you need high requirements, uh, then then you you can uh, you will be you you will you can get it. It will use a lot more of energy of resources. And on the contrary, you could have low requirements. So. Uh, and second thing is ownership. Uh, in fact, GSMA is introducing new roles uh, inside uh, uh, whenever it comes to 5G uh, communication. So all of that to say that we are in a world where we are opening uh, and we, you cannot do your business just alone. And it's, it's true also for the telco companies. Uh, so I will go directly in our uh, use case. So we do have some composite service. If we have a look at the technical implementation, part uh, of the of the technical services, there they are these are these are some services provided by other actors. Um, and if we we can think about this relation between actors, there there are some contracts existing between all of these actors. Uh, so on one part, you've got, uh, uh, let's say, I take the example of, uh, oh, I lost my mouse, uh, of the, the green one. So the green one is providing uh, some service to, uh, to the, the orange one. 
So he's got a commercial offer with terms and condition, and those are statics. They are, they are really uh, what's inside the contract. And then you've got a, a stateful part uh, with states, uh, which is the customer contract by itself. So in our use case, that may be, I don't know, the customer balance or um, some co configuration or some user preference, etc. So maybe you see me coming, one part static, other part we, we deal with the, with the state. So what if we try to implement that, that idea of having um, uh, of having a contract as code, we can do it. Uh, we can uh, we can uh, with Wasm Cloud. We we can have some. Uh, so here we have three different provider: orange, green, blue. Uh, we need something common, which would be a common lattice that will just ensure that the different contracts of the different actors are called in sequence. So the main idea is whenever you will want to rate the usage of a, of a service, then you can just call this common lattice to, to know how, what, what is the rating for this particular usage. And then the system would go down the line of the different, uh, the different actors and different contracts. And, and, and then uh, each of these uh, commercial contracts will activate depending on the conditions, terms and condition of each contract. So this is, this is one example. So if we, you want to have a look at that, we implemented in, a, uh, in this uh, GitHub uh, repo uh, and it works. So what, what yeah, I, I will skip that part and it was uh, that this part is about how to deal with distributed states. Uh, so it's complicated just to to know that there are different options. Uh, with Wasm Cloud, you can, for instance, uh, address one capability provider which will hold all the states centrally, but you will lose the benefit of being at the edge. So like, imagine you have your 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 payloads at the edge, and then you have to travel back. To, to go to central states. So you could uh, also rely on, on other, uh, other um, uh, multi-region multi enabled uh, providers, uh, data source providers, it's in a hyper, hyperscalers, or you can build yourself. And we decided to build it with event sourcing, that means that we, we just, we just um, operate the logic at the application level, and for that we will use a uh, concordance, which is uh, an event store, uh, an event store implementation on top of Wasm Cloud. So, get back to our distributed rating system. So, what can we do uh, with uh, such an ecosystem? So, it can, uh, so, being able to to model the relationship between actors as code can enable to can unlock a lot of things. We can build something, some ecosystem, which would be really truly open, where you can have some new actors coming that uh, that will build upon existing uh, existing services. So it, it's in the in the cloud in this industry, it's, we we do that every time. But uh, but but it's something quite new for for telco, really. Um, so here we apply this pot, but pattern, sorry, uh, to um, uh, this pluggable behavior pattern to uh, rating functions, but we could also apply it for more complex functions such as act service provisioning, service activation. It's more complex because uh, the different actors, they have different roles. So the usage of the ones or the, the provisioning of the others, etc., etc. So it this same principle can be used also for service provision. So to wrap up, um, what about our edge challenge? So in fact, we have different game changing technologies so uh, that, that will unlock disruptive architecture pattern and, and that will enable the business. So uh, edge distribution, we, we said efficiency, uh, real time, 
uh, Wasm Cloud Web Assembly, sorry, is about code portability, trusted code, resource efficiency, Wasm Cloud distribution, operation at ZDH, multi-tenancy, etc. And, and then with the functional approach, we can gain deployment flexibility because it's functional. You, you can place wherever the payload, you can place your function wherever you want. It will give the same results. It will not be as efficient if you place it uh, far away from the effector or from the input, but it will still work. So this is really powerful. Contract X call also is, is really about pluggable behavior. And we discussed, we have all the tools with the, with the um, component model to, to do that uh, with WASM, and even sourcing for distributed states. So final words, uh, really the um, Orange is involved uh, as an operator and all the telco are, are really deeply involved in, in open project, common project to normalize and open their infrastructure, their platform to provide their common assets. So I, I could quote several, if you're interested in, a, in Kubernetes, you've got the Silva initiative, uh, which is about telco cloud. Uh, Camara is about sharing, uh, releasing directly to the de developer some API that they can use to build upon, on really, that can use to, to consume telco services to, to put inside application. Purple, it's about having some, um, uh, the same software on, on the, on the, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> same software on the setup blocks and uh, on the, on the gateways, fiber gateways, etc. So I would say that open platforms, uh, open standards, open source, they are no longer just a moral preference. They, they are really a need if we want to maintain business resilient and sustainable. So, and just uh, if you want to know more, uh, we will be present also and presenting different stuff at, in uh, Copenhagen uh, on TMF uh, TM forum. Uh, so Disco, which is uh, an open source implementation of uh, core commerce using the technologies, uh, the, the, what I've shown, and, and also we're discussing really how WebAssembly and, uh, and Kubernetes are, 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 can be bound together uh, to, to build application. Thank you. Uh, Jan, thank you so much uh, for this exciting talk. Um, uh, we may, maybe have time for one question, if anyone has one. Let's see if it's a good one. Make it hard for you to give to me. Um, a quick comment and then a question. Uh, the comment is, um, I'm from Ericsson, so I think I read more into your slides than probably most of the people in the room. When you're talking about um, building this new kind of model, it is really about um, basic uh, app providers having the ability to create these slices so that they can get a particular quality of service or things from the network yeah. that nobody's been able to get before. Um, examples of um, you know uh, 8K video coming in for telemedicine, uh, where you're trying you're to right. do something remotely, or you know augmented reality is we're getting more into that for a surgeon for, a, for exactly. Yeah. So just to give more applicability to the to the rest of the room, my question is: as you look at Wasm and Wasi today, what's missing? What's the next thing? What's the most important thing for this platform yeah. to do for you and for the telco industry? Okay, I would say that right now, when we are speaking about uh, uh, NFV, virtualized function, we are bound to Kubernetes uh, because, well, it's the logical choice. So we, we need a, a little time, I think. <laughs> that would be the first first quick answer for, for that. But we can think about having uh, re real, uh, uh, we, we see that the ecosystem within uh, Wasm Cloud and Kubernetes is really evolving. We see that we could try to implement those NFVs with eBPF, but also when it, when it comes to higher level, uh, it, we could build these higher level functions that will not fit inside eBPF. We can build it with a Wasm Cloud, the Wasm, sorry. So I, I think we just need time and maturity, and, uh, and, and we know that right now it's a lot of work to transform the 
the network appliance inside being cloud native and uh, externalize the safe, et cetera. So uh, see that you agree. <laughs> uh, maybe one more and then uh, we gotta get going. Thank you. Um, question about um, uh, security and trust. Yeah. Um, when you are uh, pushing the function and the computing to the edge, uh, are you taking as a, a mandatory condition that you are working on a trusted zone? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> this is a good question. Uh, I didn't have the, the time to, to go through. So what, what is the uh, Wasm Cloud ensure you yeah, that you have secure communications between your, or your Wasm Cloud host as long as you can trust these binaries this host. So when it comes to trust, there is a, the whole chain coming from, uh, starting from, from the hardware uh, and, and you can build a, and in, in, in order to have this to function, we, we have to, to start from, from the hardware with TPM, etc. So uh, it's another field uh, and it will hopefully be demonstrated in also in, a, in a Copenhagen but we are working on attestation framework in order to, uh, to, 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 to show that the binary has not been altered. So, and then it starts from here and you have the whole chain. Thank you for the Great question. questions. Uh, please uh, join me in thanking uh, Jan um, for his wonderful talk. Thank Jan, thank you so much.